So, actually, Kennedy takes Kenneth O'Donnell with him to Chicago. And there's a reason why he did that. He had a little strategy already planned. So, President Kennedy takes Kenneth O'Donnell. They leave for their trip to Chicago Friday morning. And they spend the entire day with Mayor Daley. He's thrilled to death. He's got the president by his side. He's kind of excited. And he fulfills his obligation. Now, he's scheduled to come back Saturday, right? And he wants Bobby to have a consensus on the blockade or airstrikes by Saturday. Well, during this trip when uh, the president was spending time with Mayor Daley, Bobby called O'Donnell. And he told O'Donnell that XCOM had come up with a consensus for a blockade, but he's got a lot of people waffling, and he doesn't think it'll last more than the end of the day Friday. He thinks if they go into Saturday that people are going to do what? Change their mind or back out. So as this day is going on Friday, Bobby Kennedy calls Kenneth O'Donnell. He says, listen, I've got a consensus for a blockade from XCOM, but I don't think it's going to last past today. Okay, if we don't get something done. So what do they want to happen? They want what? Kennedy to return to Washington, D.C. Okay, and he's not scheduled to do that. Now, Bobby was concerned. He told O'Donnell, you know, the military is really still pushing for airstrikes, but i got other people on this committee that I think we can get this consensus for a blockade, but if you don't get him back before tomorrow, it isn't going to work. So... Who does O'Donnell go to and give him some information? Who else is on the trip that speaks for the president? Press secretary. Who is a press secretary? Pierre. Pierre Salinger. So this is kind of comical. So O'Donnell goes to press secretary Salinger and he tells Salinger that the president has developed a cold and he needs to return to his doctor in Washington, D.C. immediately. And this obviously takes Salinger a little bit by surprise, right? He says, he did. is Salinger on XCOM? No, he knows nothing about these missiles. Zero. They don't want him to know. Why? Because he's the press secretary. But he's there because he travels with the president. So Kenneth O'Donnell goes up to press secretary Pierre Salinger and he says, hey, by the way, the president has developed a cold and he's going to need to return to his doctor in Washington, D.C. tonight. And what's Pierre Salinger's responsibility once he gets that information? To announce that to the press, that the president's developed a cold and he's going home. Well, Salinger is kind of frustrated because he doesn't understand, you know, he's not in the loop, so he says, Kenny, hey, do I get any input around here on this? And O'Donnell responds to him, yeah, you do. You can, you can report on how bad it is. That's up to you, how bad the cold is. You can report how bad the cold is. So he says, geez, Kenny, do I, do I get any input? Or, yeah, you can report how bad that cold is. And that was kind of the end of it. So Salinger gets uh, to the press room, and he announces that the president will be canceling the rest of his visit to Chicago and returning to Washington, D.C. on the advice of his doctor. So that's the cover-up that got him back. I think I even I used to have a newspaper article that even said that. So you kind of put that in perspective, and I'll see if I can find that. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I've been looking all over for that. Let me see if I can find it. It's kind of interesting. I'm going to need that. A lot of these are assassination papers, but I'm sure I had one on that. Might be in the home along with other clutches. Oh, I don't have it here, but I do have one more to need to see later. But anyway, <coughs> the president cancels his trip and heads back to Washington, D.C. Okay, that takes us to Saturday, October 20th. And this is going to be a long day. Saturday, October 20th. So, Kennedy returns from Chicago, and who does he, what does he do right away? Meet with who? XCOM, okay? Because when he gets back, Bobby's told him if he gets back by the end of the day, he thinks he can get the consensus for the blockade. Well, it doesn't happen overnight. The committee gets back. They've been, they've been deliberating on this for hours. And finally, 
they do agree to recommend a blockade of all ships into Cuba. Okay, so the committee, after hours of deliberation, recommended a blockade of all ships into Cuba. Do you think the military was that hot on that? They really were not, but they went with it. Now, this term blockade made Secretary of Defense McNamara kind of nervous. And he didn't want to call it a blockade. He wanted to call it a quarantine instead. Okay, what's the difference between the term blockade or quarantine? Okay, so I'm going to put a blockade up so none of you kids can get in the guidance office. Okay? Or I'm going to quarantine you out because I'm afraid I might get a cold. What sounds more warlike? Blockade, right? More bully-like, so to speak. And McNamara didn't like that. So he insisted from that point on that this would not be called a blockade. It would be called a quarantine. In other words, they would be quarantining everything in Cuba and not letting anything in or out rather than the blockade where we're saying, by God, you can't come in here. McNamara thought the term blockade would be seen as an act of war, whereas quarantine would not. Okay, And who's he worried about again? Who's he worried about? Well, Russia, but he's worried about the United Nations, too, because he does not, they don't want this to seem like a big country bullying a small country. They don't want that. They don't want this word out that missiles are there yet. They don't want anybody to know this yet. There will be a time when they'll want everybody to know that, but this isn't the time, okay? Now, here was the plan for the, for the quarantine. I hate to even say blockade because McNamara would be slapping my face. So McNamara then explained the quarantine plan to XCOM. This was how things were going to happen. Because you've got 25 ships coming, right? We're going to have to have a plan, right? They're coming. Here's the plan. First step for the Quarantine Act would be that the United States Navy would stop any Soviet ship that was 800 miles out from the quarantine line. They actually drew kind of a line in the ocean that was their quarantine line. And the idea initially, the initial plan on the quarantine was that they were going to stop any Soviet ship 800 miles out. Once they stopped that ship 800 miles out, what do you think would be the next thing they'd do, Levi? Very good. They would board it and search it. Inspect it. They, they would call it, and we want to inspect your ship. But what were they doing? They were looking for what? Missiles, right? So the second plan was the Soviet ship would be boarded and inspected. They didn't want to use the word search, inspected. And the third part of that plan is if that vessel carried, carried missiles, what would they do? To, if you want to kind of keep this kind of low key, what would they do if, if they stopped the ship and it did carry missiles? What would they do to the ship? No, they want to be warlike. You'd think so, but what'd they do? Turn around and go home. That was the plan. They would order the, the ship back to the Soviet Union. So the three-step plan initially, and I say initially because it's going to change, the three-step plan initially for the quarantine that McNamara explained to XCOM was that the United States Navy would stop any Soviet ship that was 800 miles out from the quarantine line. Once they stopped them, they would board the ship and inspect it. What they were really doing was a search. And if they found met weapons or missiles, they would simply let them keep them and order them back to the Soviet Union. Now, it solves half the problem. Okay, what, what half does it solve? We're not going to have any more missiles in Cuba. What half doesn't it solve, Jacob? The missiles that are already there and the crunch time that we have to worry about them being operational. But what was the hope? What was the, it was kind of a faint hope, but if they did this, what was the hope that the Soviet Union would do? If we stopped their ships, inspected them, found missiles and sent them back, once the Soviet Union knew the gig was up, what were we hoping they would do on their own, voluntarily? Yes. Remove the other missiles and take them out. That was the plan. So people say, well, gee whiz, this blockade is really kind of a bad deal. You know, it just it doesn't show much force. They're trying to solve this by negotiation in a way. They're trying to do it this the soft way so that they don't end up getting themselves in a war. So they're hoping that if they call the Soviet Union's bluff, that they will return. They'll just take the missiles out of their own. Okay? Now, what action do we still have 
if the Soviets don't do that? What can we still do? We don't really want it, but we can still do it. Airstrikes and invasion. So what Kennedy's trying to do here is keep us out of a pickle. That's what he's really trying to do. So he's trying to do this a nice, easy way to get this thing taken care of without starting a damn war. So basically what McNamara does is he reports the, the, uh, the strategy that will be used on the quarantine. He tells them that I know this won't solve the problem of the missiles that are already there, but we're really hoping that they'll figure this out and take these missiles out on their own. And if they don't figure it out, we still have the option of airstrikes and invasion. So that's kind of where we're at here. Is the military liking this much? Not really. And what else does this do? This also avoids what? Bobby's concern about a sneak attack. Okay? So, McNamara states, again, if the Soviets refuse to remove the missiles, we can always airstrike and invade, and this would avoid that sneak attack that Bobby was concerned about because he, did, he wants support from other countries on this deal. Now, the guy that probably was the most upset about this wasn't so much the military, it was CIA Director John McComb. He was the one that really was concerned about this blockade. He understood it, he understood what the idea behind it was, but he still voiced his opposition. And he still pushed for airstrikes followed by invasion. And he gave two reasons for that. Okay, now I want you to really think about this. So, CIA Director John McCone continues to voice his opposition to the quarantine. He doesn't like the idea at all. He's still pushing hard for airstrikes followed by invasion, and he gives two pretty good reasons why he thinks that this is a bad idea. What are we going to lose with this blockade? Do the Soviets know that we know they have missiles in Cuba? No. Do the Cubans know that we know they have missiles in Cuba? So if we go in with the airstrikes and invasion, we have what's called first strike capability. The element of surprise is there. If we put up a quarantine or blockade to Cuba, they're going to know we know something. And all of a sudden, that first strike capability is gone. That was the first complaint John McCone had. You can't go in there and airstrike and invade if they don't take the missiles out because they know you're coming. And they're going to be prepared and it's going to be worse than if we go in right now and do it. That was his first complaint. Now, he also was concerned about the Soviet Union launching their nuclear missiles from Turkey. What would your philosophy be? If we're going to get attacked, we'll better use them or lose them. Okay? So if we let them know that we know something about this, McCone believes, first of all, we lose first strike capability, we lose the element of surprise, and if the Soviets think that we're going to shoot missiles at them, they're going to maybe shoot theirs first with the use them or lose them philosophy, and we're in a world war. So McCone has pretty good points, doesn't he, you know, to, a, to, a, to a point? I mean, he knows what's going to happen here. Now, I'll finish the lecture with what seems to be the real chicken shit way out, but it turns out in the end that this is the best suggestion we get. Finally, who steps up to the plate and says this? Maybe one of us in this room should be a coward, so I guess it'll be me. Which one of the members of XCOM stands up and says that quote? Stands up after this discussion back and forth, which is getting a little heated, and says, quote, maybe one of us in this room should be a coward, so I guess it'll be me. Who's the appeaser? Who's the nice guy? Who's the real, everybody really likes the guy that's on the XCOM? Very good, two days in a row. Adlai Stevenson stands up and he says, well, maybe one of us in this room should be a coward, so I'll guess it'll be me. So he's got a third option to try to solve this crisis, other than airstrikes followed by invasion or a quarantine or blockade. What do you think his way of doing? If he makes this comment, maybe one of us in this room should be a coward, so I guess it'll be me, what recommendation is he making? close, he says, I just kind of gave you a little bit of, what are two areas, I told you one, the Soviets are concerned because we have missiles in Turkey. How close is Turkey to the Soviet Union? I mean, just as close in a way as Cuba is to the United States, so we're no better than they are, right? We've got nuclear missiles in Turkey that 
the Soviets have been watching just as much as we've been watching what's going on in Cuba. What else is a big something we own right now that's in Cuba that is always controversial where we house our military prisoners? Guantanamo Bay. Guantanamo Bay. And so Stevenson stands up and says, hey, why don't we trade with uh, Guantanamo Bay and our missiles in Turkey for what? For them removing their missiles from Cuba. Let's make a deal. Let's, let's negotiate. So Adlai Stevenson stands up and says, I recommend just let's strike a deal with them. We'll trade Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and our missiles in Turkey in exchange for the Soviets removing their missiles in Cuba. When he said that, what do you think the reaction was in the room, especially by the military personnel? Excuse my friend, you've got to be shit. We're never doing that. that. That is the biggest sign of weakness ever. And the president was so gracious to Adlai Stevenson, he just looked at him and kind of said, Adlai, I just I don't see that being possible. So that's the third option they had at the time. But nobody liked it, I can assure you. But let's come back at the end of this lecture in a few days and see how true to blue that might have come. Okay? So President Kennedy respectfully stated to Stevenson that that was not possible. And I want to end with this. He continued and told XCOM that he would make his decision on what he was going to do in a national television appearance on Monday night. Okay, now what day are we talking about here? What day are we on? We're on Saturday. So what's he going to do Sunday? Pretty much think about it. And what he's going to do is he's going to decide. He's the commander in chief. So he tells XCOM, I will decide by Monday evening whether we're going to do quarantine or invasion followed by, or airstrikes followed by invasion. So he's going to take the next 24 to 48 hours to make that decision, then he's going to get on national television on Monday and tell the American people about the missiles in Cuba and what the United States' plan is in Cuba. Okay? And so Sunday will be an interesting day too. Now we still have lots of things that happen after Kennedy tells XCOM his plan and dismisses them. He's got another problem that he's going to have to deal with Saturday night before Sunday even comes about. Okay? All right, good deal. It's a little complicated, but it's pretty interesting.